Today, we are counting functions and discussing the pigeonhole principle. Well, some things we know. So let's just start off and suppose we have two finite sets, A and B, and such that, let's say the cardinality of A is N and the cardinality of B is M. And then let's think about some things that we can count. Okay, first of all, the number of relations from A to B. How can we count this? Well, let's think about what is a relation from A to B. By definition, a relation is any subset of the cross product. And this is the case if and only if R is an element of the power set of A cross B. And now we can really think about counting these things because what do we know? We know the car cardinality of A cross B is N times M. And so if you think about the power set, it's two to the N times, N times M. So the answer here is two to the N times M. This is the number of relations. Okay, what else can we count? Well, let's count the number of functions from A to B. Now this we're gonna to have to do a little bit more thinking. We know, for example, every function is a relation, right? That's how we started functions day one. It's a relation from A to B such that, and then we had some properties, but Maybe for this, let me, let me give a, some specific elements. So A is going to be A1 through AN. And now how can I think about a function? Well, we can think about describing a function by first having a f of A1 and then f of A2 and then f of a3, and then we just keep assigning, and for each one of these, we just pick an element of b, and we would say that is what I'm assigning to f of a1. Then we move on. We can assign, now we have f of a2, we assign something from b, and we move on like this. And this is a multiplication rule. So to, to find a value, because we know it's a function, so you can only have one thing in B that, that A1 maps to, but we have M possibilities here. And similarly, for this value, A2, what's going to be F of A2? Well, we have M possibilities here, and then we have M possibilities for F of A3, and then we keep assigning, and this is the last one. And you can really... Um, well, let me write the answer and I'll make my comment. The answer here, as we see multiplication rule, it's M to the N, M to the N. But what I was starting to say is in this one, if we had A here, B here, right? How do you assign? And this is something we talked about in our functions videos. Well, it's in this order, Here's A1, we have three choices, right? So maybe I pick this one. And then the next one, A2, I have another three choices. Well, maybe I also pick this one. Then here, we have three choices, right? And maybe here I pick this one. That's how this multiplication rule happens. And this is the, the number of all functions from A to B. Now, one more thing we will, we will count before I say something more is the number of one-to-one -one functions. Now, I need to make a requirement here. I'm going to assume here that the cardinality of A is strictly less than or equal to the cardinality of B for this Maybe I should put lines under here to separate. This was relations. 
This is general counting functions. And now I will count one to one functions. And you'll see why I need to assume this. Well, it's going to be the same idea as counting functions, multiplication rule, except when you go to a sign, well, I'm not going to actually fill in that many. We would assign a value to a 1, assign a value to a 2, assign a value to a 3, all the way out to assign a value to a n. But we don't have all, all these possibilities. What we need for one-to-one -one functions is you cannot have two elements of A mapping to the same element in B. That's not one-to-one. -one. Okay, so how do we do that here? Well, thinking about our multiplication rule, we still start off and we pick anything. We pick any of the M elements of B to make F of A1. And in our picture here, that was just my first choice. Okay, this one, fine. But you see the function I have drawn here, it's not one, two, one. When I assign f of a two, I, I can't choose this one. I've already, it already has the element that maps to it. So I only have two other possibilities, or generally I would have m minus one. So I would have m minus one here, because I can, I can choose any element of b for f of a two, except the thing I've already chosen. Okay, now, if I've chosen something for f of a1, chosen something for f of a2, well, now comes f of a3, and I can pick any element of b, except the two I've already selected here. So I would have m minus 2 for f of a3, for the same reason, right? If I picked one of these two, I'd have two different elements, mapping to the same one, not one to one. And this would continue all the way to here, we would have m minus n plus 1 possibilities for the last one. And we've seen this quantity oops, before in our counting sections. And so the answer here, this was p, m, n, which is this. Or you could also write this m factorial over m minus n factorial. This is the number of one-to-one -one functions. And certainly, for this, this quantity to be defined, you need n less than or equal to m. Um, and that's really the only situation I was thinking about here. Um, OK, so now we have some things we've started counting. And, and what I want to do now is, is state the pigeonhole principle. But then we will address this question when um, let's see, n is greater than m. So the cardinality of a is greater than the cardinality of b. So let me state the original principle, and we will continue on this topic of one-to-one -one functions. So this says, if x pigeons occupy y pigeonholes, and x is bigger than y, then, now you have to be careful about your conclusion here. It says the following, at least one, one pigeonhole hole contains two or more pigeons. Two or more pigeons. Okay, now, this might seem not even like math. I don't know, let's say it in terms of pigeons and pigeonholes. The amazing thing is the pigeonhole principle is very powerful, and sometimes you have to be very creative to use it, but it's a very powerful uh, principle. So we will use the pigeonhole principle in two propositions that have to do with counting functions. Then we'll use it in some other examples. And the first is this. Okay, so for A and B finite sets. Everything I'm doing in this section, finite sets. If, I'll state it this way, the cardinality of A 
is bigger than the cardinality of B, then there are no, there are no one-to-one -one functions F from A to B. Okay? Now let's prove this. And we will prove this by contradiction. And it's an if then. So by contradiction. Let's remind ourselves how we prove an implication by contradiction. If you want to prove P implies Q, you assume P is true and not Q is true. Then you argue until you reach a contradiction. So let's do that here. We assume The cardinality of A is bigger than the cardinality of B, okay? A, B in finite sense, we are still working in this case. Cardinality of A bigger than the cardinality of B, that's the if part, and we assume there exists a function from A to B such that F is one to one. With F one to one. Now, we need to argue until we get a contradiction. Well, wonderful. Okay. We use the pigeonhole principle. Hole principle, which says, well, stated above, but in order to use this, I'm gonna, what are my pigeons? What are my pigeonholes? Then pigeons must occupy the pigeonholes, so when does the pigeon occupy a pigeonhole? <laughs> okay, well, my pigeons, period, my pigeons are the elements of A, capital A. My pigeonholes are the elements of capital B, capital B. And then, little a, pigeon little a, occupies pigeonhole little b, little b, well, if and only if, f of a equals b, f of a equals b. Okay. Now we will unravel because look, cardinality of A, we have more pigeons than we do pigeonholes. So as cardinality of A is bigger than cardinality of B, by the pigeonhole principle, principle, we have, okay, let's see. We have at least one pigeonhole. That's a B in B. So there exists B in B. This is the at least one pigeonhole that contains two or more pigeons. So and two or more, A1, A2, and A. A1 not equal to A2. And both of these pigeons occupy the pigeonhole with f of a1 equals um, f of a2, which is b. Now, if you look at this, you realize we have our contradiction because we have two different elements of a that map to the same element of b. This says f is not 1 to 1. This contradicts, I'll say this contradicts, F being one to one, okay? So therefore, so therefore we have proved this. We reached a contradiction, so we have proved if the cardinality of A is bigger than the cardinality of B, there are no one to one functions from A to B. So I have A and B finite sets, 
You see, I'm almost copying the same thing, except I'm going to state it for onto. This would be if the cardinal of A is less than cardinality of B, then there are no onto functions F from A to B, okay? So all I've done is just change the statement slightly so that it's the correct statement for onto functions, and now I will erase, here we go with the proof. And just like the last one, we will begin by contradiction. Okay, so what this means is we assume cardinality of A less than cardinality of B, and there exists a function from A to B that is onto with F onto. Okay? Again, we use the pigeonhole principle. We use pigeonhole principle. And how do we do it this time? Well, the pigeons have changed. The pigeons are the elements in the image. Elements in the image of F, and the pigeonholes are elements of A elements of A Okay, now how do I sign a pigeon to a pigeonhole? The little b and m F occupies pigeonhole little a if and only if, well this part looks the same, f of a equals b. Okay, so I have a way to take something in the image and put it in one of the pigeonholes for when f of a equals b. Okay, now as F is onto, we know a definition of onto is that the image is all of B. So the cardinality of the image would be the cardinality of B, okay? And then this is strictly greater than the cardinality of A. So by the pigeonhole principle, we, you see we have more pigeons than we have pigeonholes. By the pigeonhole, Principle, what do we see? Well, we have to be careful again. It says we have at least one pigeon. So there exists an A in A. These are my, oh, excuse me. <laughs> I just said we have to be careful. Pigeonhole principle says there exists at least one pigeonhole. That's this, the pigeonhole. And it, that pigeonhole has two or more pigeons. The pigeons are elements in the image, B1, B2, and the image. These are different, okay, such that both of these pigeons are in the same pigeonhole or occupy the same pigeonhole. So with F of A equals B1 and F of A equals B2. Now, if you look at this, we have a contradiction. The contradiction is not, not being ought to. The contradiction is that F is not a function because we have F of A. Or we have A and A, I should say. And F maps into two different things in, in B. Okay, so this contradicts. F being a function, and therefore we have reached our contradiction, meaning we have proven the proposition. Okay, again, pigeonhole principle. We had a different choice of pigeons, different choice of pigeonholes, but we're able to prove that the cardinality of A is less than cardinality of B, then you cannot have any onto functions from A to B. So here is my remark. 
It's a remark about what we have proved, and then we'll restate it. My remark is the following. Well, okay, what's my, my situation? I have A and B finite sets, right? This is throughout. And we have F from A to B, a function. If the cardinality of A is not equal to the cardinality of B, then F is not a bijection. And let me think, or let me maybe discuss for a moment why in fact we have proved this. Okay, well, let's think about this statement. There's two cases here. If the carbon, if two numbers are not equal, there's only two possibilities. Either you have this, or you have this, right? <laughs> we have one of these cases, two cases, when we have this not equal. And this one, we proved, if the cardinality of A is less than, it's erased, the cardinality of B, F, cannot be onto, onto. And if the cardinality of A is bigger than the cardinality of B, F cannot be one to one. Moreover, we know a bijection by definition is a function that's both one to one and onto. Okay, so here, if, if the two Cardinalities are not equal, one of these is true, one of these will fail, and in either case, F is not a bijection, right? This is what we proved. Now, let's restate this. Now, I'm going to keep this part the same. A, B, finite sets, and F is a function from A to B. And how am I going to restate this? Well, by restate, what I mean here is contrapositive. We know the contrapositive of an if-then is equivalent to the original statement. And so let's, in fact, we have proved the contrapositive because we have proved, we proved this. And these two are equivalent. And what does this say? Well, you negate this implies negate this. The contrapositive says if f from a to b is a bijection, then the cardinality of a equals cardinality of b. It's, it's quite an important thing you can use for finite sets. Maybe I'll put this in parentheses. You can use for counting because, for example, for example, if you can easily count um, maybe elements of A and you find a bijection between that and some set B and you, set B is hard to count, well, you would know that it's the same thing as the cardinality of A. You have that many elements, for example. <laughs>